Do you know which Hokage wasn't originally going to be human? Or which character has ninjutsu named after Gundam mechs? I've uncovered 20 secrets that will change the way you look at the ninja world forever. Let's go on an unforgettable adventure through the world of Naruto and explore the fascinating depths of this iconic anime. In today's video, I'm diving deep into the hidden secrets and little-known facts of the Naruto universe. From hidden revelations to unexpected character connections, I'll uncover the juiciest tidbits that'll make you question everything you thought you knew about this legendary anime. Let's get started. Did you know that Naruto was actually supposed to be a wizard instead of a ninja? Yep. Kishimoto originally had this wild idea, but then he was like, wait a minute, that's way too confusing. So he ditched it and went with the ninjutsu world we know and love. Thank goodness. In the early days of the anime, Naruto almost got booted because some big shot got all bent out of shape about the crazy amount of deaths in the show. They went ahead and filed a complaint, asking one of the show's sponsors to cut their funding. But guess what? The sponsors took one look at the soaring ratings and decided to keep the deaths going. Can't argue with ratings, right? Even though the series has a boatload of casualties, our beloved Naruto himself only took out one person. Know who it was? Yura, a Jonin from the Sand Village who was made to look like Itachi by pain shape-shifting technique. Gara has a connection to the Matrix that I bet you didn't know about. Kishimoto found Gara's first outfit difficult to keep drawing, so for his next look, he took inspiration from Neo and his sleek look. You can totally see the similarities as well, with the monotone trench coat style look with the high collar. All Gara is missing is Neo's iconic sunglasses. Back when Naruto was still in the pre-print process, Kishimoto had a wild idea for the third Hokage. Instead of the wise old dude we know, he wanted to go full-on beast mode. Yep, the Hiruzen was going to be a dog. Eventually, Kishimoto came to his senses and dropped the concept. It actually would have been pretty epic. Think of Sajin Komamura from Bleach, but with ninjutsu. On the day a Hokage gets appointed, they score a sick Haori, that sweet jacket that traditionally sits over a kimono. But here's the mind-blowing part. The same lady is responsible for making all seven of these Hayoris, from Hashirama to Naruto. Can you believe it? That's at least a hundred years of making the Hayori for the Hokage. Did you know that Hashirama's and Tobirama's names have complementary meanings? Hashirama means the space between two pillars. This is interesting because the Hokage is like the rock-solid pillar supporting the entire village, so his name is a nod to his role as the unwavering foundation of Konoha. Tobirama's name is similar but with a twist. It means the space between two doors. Doors, my friends, symbolize progress and improvement, and that's exactly what Tobirama brought during his time as Hokage. He pushed the village forward, always seeking growth. Also, their last name Senju translates to a thousand hands. It could be a nod to their leadership over a massive number of people, or a reminder that the village can't make progress without the contributions of every single individual. Originally, Kishimoto had some seriously difficult plans for Gara's character, like Jekyll and Hyde different. Initially, Kishimoto was planning to introduce Gara as a seven-year-old ninja who was addicted to substances. Yeah, you heard it right. A substance-addicted seven-year-old ninja. That's some heavy stuff. Thankfully, Kishimoto decided to go in a different direction, and that's when our beloved Gara came to be. Personally, I like Gara's current backstory much more than the original plan. It shows that sometimes, rewriting is where the magic happens. On the cover page of the 766th chapter of the One Piece manga, we all got a special treat, where Oda made a nod to Kishimoto for the end of the Naruto manga. Luffy can be seen enjoying some delicious ramen, while Naruto, who's eating a giant piece of meat, is sitting across from him. But he is cleverly hidden behind Nami, who's rocking a Chang Pao adorned with the emblem of Konoha. As the show progressed, a lot of fans couldn't help but wonder if Sakura could have ended up with Naruto. Turns out, Kishimoto's wife was one of the fans hoping this would happen. Even his wife was shocked when Naruto revealed his love for Hinata. To smooth things over, Kishimoto told his wife that he modeled Hinata after her. But here's the twist. Some of Sakura's traits actually came from Kishimoto's wife. When Naruto's manga first dropped, he rocked the one-of-a-kind style. Besides his signature orange outfit, he sported green goggles perched on his head. But they didn't stick around for long. Once Naruto leveled up to Genin status, he ditched those goggles and rocked a Konoha headband instead. Now, you might think it was just a flex to show off his new status, which is partly true. But there's another reason behind this switch-up. Kishimoto had a practical side to him. Drawing those goggles was eating up too much of his precious time while he created those manga pages. So he made the genius move of axing the goggles, saving himself some valuable drawing time. Back in 1961, manga master Sanpei Shirato dropped a timeless gem called Sasuke, a manga classic you might have missed. But Kishimoto? He read it all, right? 
and he took major inspiration from it to shape our beloved Sasuke Uchiha's backstory. Just like the Sasuke Uchiha we can't get enough of in Naruto, Shirato Sasuke embarks on epic adventures after his whole village gets massacred. It's a tale of tragedy and resilience. The legacy of Sasuke reaches across time, bridging the gap between Shirato's masterpiece and Naruto's captivating world. It's a testament to the power of storytelling and the impact it can have on future generations of creators. Naruto was never going to meet his parents, but when Kishimoto became a parent himself, he felt a deep connection and knew he had to give Naruto the reunion he deserved. And so, the story took a thrilling turn. To bring about that long-awaited reunion, the tale turned to two powerful methods, time travel and reanimation. These story elements allowed Naruto to connect with his parents in a way that touched our hearts. It's a testament to Kishimoto's journey as a parent, infusing Naruto's tale with love, longing, and the powerful bonds of family. So thanks to Kishimoto's own experiences and creative twists, Naruto's journey became even more heartfelt and captivating. The toads of Mount Myoboku aren't just any old toads. No sir, they bear the names of legendary Japanese actors, adding an extra layer of awesomeness to their characters. Shima was named after the esteemed actress Shima Iwashita. Gamabunta pays homage to Bunta Sugawara, a renowned Japanese actor known for his captivating performances. Then there's Gama Ken, who's named after the legendary Ken Takakura, another iconic actor who left a lasting impact on the world of Japanese cinema. So the next time you witness these toads in action, remember that their names carry a piece of Japanese acting history. One of the ninjas in Naruto has ninjutsu named after Gundam mechs, as it was a favorite of Kishimoto during his youth. And it's none other than Kakuzu. One of Kakuzu's notable ninjutsu, Earth Grudge Fear, has a connection to the iconic Gundam MSN-02 Zong. The name Earth Grudge Fear itself pays homage to the fearsome Zong from the Gundam universe. So the next time you witness Kakuzu unleashing his Earth Grudge Fear technique, remember the nod to Mobile Suit Gundam and the legacy of the mighty Zong. It's a delightful easter egg, Gundam and Naruto crossing paths. Knowing that Naruto would be released outside of Japan, the creative team made a conscious decision when selecting the background music. They opted for compositions that prominently featured traditional Japanese instruments, like taiko drums, shakuhachi flutes, and shamisen strings. The reason behind this choice was to provide non-Japanese viewers with a unique and unfamiliar auditory experience. By incorporating these distinct Japanese musical elements, the producers aimed to create an immersive atmosphere and enhance cultural immersion for international audiences. The rich sounds of taiko, shakuhachi, and Shamisen added a touch of authenticity and helped to transport viewers into the vibrant world of Naruto. The music becomes a bridge that connects us, regardless of our cultural backgrounds. Here's something you may not know. Germany has gained a reputation for imposing stringent censorship regulations on various forms of media, including video games, movies, and animation. This also extends to Naruto, where certain alterations were made to the anime adaptation due to these regulations. One notable change that occurred in the German dub of Naruto involves the removal of blades from the animation. In scenes where ninjas engage in blade fighting, the blades were edited out, creating a peculiar visual effect. Those in Germany might want to make use of a VPN to get those kunai back. Think wisely, fellow shinobi. It may seem apparent, but some may not know that Rock Lee and Mike Guy are based on the legendary Bruce Lee. They not only share similar looks, but Rock Lee also shares the same birthday as the Jeet Kune Do Master, November 27th. In the manga, you won't find an X on Neji's head like in the anime. Originally, it was meant to be a symbol called Manji, but due to political concerns in America, the animators decided to change it to an X, as it bears a striking resemblance to the Nazi swastika. Naruto is not the last member of the Uzumaki clan. When delving into the intricate narratives of Naruto, one discovers that several individuals belong to or have ties to the Uzumaki clan. Among these notable individuals are Lady Tsunade, the fifth Hokage, Karin, and Nagato. Both Karin and Nagato possess ancestral connections to the Uzumaki clan, thus making them part of its extended lineage. Each of them contributes significantly to the overarching story, leaving a lasting impact on the Naruto universe. We're constantly unearthing new tidbits and behind-the-scenes stories that make us love the series even more. It's like discovering hidden jutsu. These facts give us a peek into the creative process and the challenges faced by the creator. Plus, they fuel our discussions and wild theories about Naruto and his fellow shinobi. So, fellow Naruto fans, keep your headbands on tight and stay tuned for the next mind-blowing revelations. Believe it.